Time is a show where I, Rich Slayton, read a true story about lawbreakers. And I, John Chesky Holmes, uh, allow my penis to riff along with Rich, and I just stay quiet off to the side. It does feel like you mostly riff from the waist. Right? The waist yeah. down? I yep. riff from the waist down. It's it. What, what, what do you call it? I shoot from feet? the hip. Yeah, you do. I'll shoot you with that music. Crime is the show that starts now. Like right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do your line. Oh, okay. Each week, Rich reads a real crime story. I don't know a word that rhymes with story. And my homie John always has the hot riff. He really loves it when you send. Don't send anything send them to me. Him. Don't Let, you dare. Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, don't you send Label anything. Label it John Chesky. He loves them. Make sure the lighting's really good. What's up, criminals? Uh, guess where we are? Back in the Comedy Store podcast dungeon. That's right. So if the mic sounds bad, it's just because of the wiring here yep, at the Comedy definitely. Store. Yeah, definitely. It's only because this building is old and held together with duct tape and broken dreams. So welcome back to the Comedy Store. And guys, sometimes uh, you have an issue where... You need you, duct tape. You need duct tape. And you don't, you can't afford any because you spent all your money on drugs. And for that, you need uh, some, I don't have money for duct tape insurance from our good buddy Joe Earl at C3 C3 Risk Risk and Insurance 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 Services. Services. Guys, we're running out of ways to do this ad read, so we just make up new shit every single time. That's what we've done since the beginning. Calm down. Stop being apologetic. Guys, you love it. You love the way we do do this. You know what? you support our sponsors. You know what to do. Go hit up our friend Joe Earl at C3Insurance.com slash Joe, 619-233-8000. Ask him if he's got some duct tape. Oh, yeah. Tell him Chesky's saying he loves uh, me. Yeah, get a policy. Get, Get insurance, you fucking animals. If you do, you get $25 to Amazon. You can buy all the duct tape Also, you, you protect your future from something some, something frivolous happening. What, what kind of insurance is it? Any insurance. Any He's insurance. an insurance broker. Any uh, do you need insurance? Probably, I'm guessing. You no, I have Writer's Guild. Yeah, there you go. Boom. He's got guild insurance. Uh, so hit up Joe. We love him. You you like him. You probably you should love him. If you knew him, you'd love him. I'm telling you that right Let's now. Let's end this ad read slate, and you're really taking all right, it. Also, uh, our other sponsor, our good friend, D. Kettleson from A, A Peace, Peace That, that Remains. remains. Ah. Uh, Hello, I'm James Hetfield. Yeah, he is. And every now and then, I, mm-hmm. I need uh, insurance, so I go to Joe Earl. And, That's oh, not the ad we Wrong doing. ad. Yeah, yeah. So I'm James Hetfield, and a couple of my Siberian Huskies were killed mm-hmm. recently when Lars Ulrich did a satanic ritual for Napster. Yeah. And uh, you know what? I had Dee turn them into little paintings, because she'll grind them down, take the ashes. She does not grind them down. <laughs> she has a mortar and pestle. Okay, here's what she does. She takes the ashes of your dead loved one or pet. Mm-hmm. She turns them in. She mixes them with paint. And then makes dope paintings so that you can hide their dead body in plain sight in an artistic, fun way. And is she still at large? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, she's oh, totally. out there running around. We've never done her episodes. Making so. milkshakes with people's dust. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. She was never caught. Go to <laughs> a P-E-A-C-E, a piece that remains.com. Get some of her art. Get her cremation art, her non-cremation art. Uh, whatever you're hey. into, go ahead and get that shit. Why not haunt your own house on purpose? That's right. <laughs> Guys, Little and, uh, particles of grandpa on the wall. He'll come back for them. If you guys want to see us in person and you're in Northern California, guess what? This weekend we will be at the Sacramento Comedy Festival, uh, Saturday, October 13th at 6 p.m. for Crime Crime Live 3. Yeah, the third time we do this shit live. the third time is a charm. Uh, We have a ridiculous story prepared. It's going to be uh, out of control. Shevsky's doing the whole show naked. I can't wait. It's It's really weird that he agreed to do that, but you know what? Fine. Show your skinny fat body off. I'm with you, dude. Thanks, right? I will be clothed like a gentleman, but he will have his dick out. Probably I'm show you my regular Probably average size the entire time. meat and potato penis. So just go to sackcomedyfest.com uh, or sackfest.com. It's one of those ones. Go to the, we'll link the thing in the thing and go buy tickets to that. Is there and a good sushi in Sacramento? Are we going for sushi? We might go for sushi, bro. We'll see what you know, you're from We're Sacramento. Out very quickly. You We're know. just dropping into the nine one six. Slayton's a busy businessman. Guys, enough of all this. Uh, today we have a really fun show prepared for you, oh, and one of great. your favorite guests, one of our favorite after the guests, show, one of our favorite guests, very funny comedian, a great writer who has guild insurance, so doesn't need anything from Joe. Mm, guild yes, charge. Although if the mob ever does come for him, we'll, I'll make sure that Joe hooks him up. Please put your virtual hands yeah. together for Kurt Metzger. Yeah, uh, uh, Writers Guild, not the. Yeah, I said Writers Guild, didn't I? I said guild insurance in general. Guild sounds like a World of Warcraft. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> if my ruby scimitar is broken, I will be provided with another one. <laughs> yeah, that, is that Writers Guild insurance good? Yeah. Yeah? I had an operation not long ago with it. You okay? Mm. Did they hit the buzzer? What happened? What was going on? I would uh, have a minor cyst removed from my skin. Nice. Man, Hot. Man. <laughs> that had to be put under for it, though. Oh, really? all the way down, huh? For a cyst. Yeah, dude. I know. Is that terrifying? And, uh, Did they uh, let you keep it? You have it in a little mason jar at home? No. Do you want to have it no, at it had, burnt and then turn into a painting? <gasps> it had burst. Ooh. 
<laughs> Did you keep it? So that's just the beginning of a discussion. Yeah, that's what remains. Uh, <laughs> call it. <laughs> just a burst cyst. Oh, oh, dude. Only thing worse than a cyst is a burst cyst. I know, but the Writers Guild was there. I'm all cysty too, bro. We're cyst gendered people. That you are. That's very uh, true. Right? <laughs> Faye Robert Kaufman. Oh, where's she from? Bakersfield? Faye? Was born on December 4th, 1940. Is that a boy or a girl? That's a girl, right? Faye? Somewhere in Texas. Yeah, that's He a Texas. was the second of four sons okay, born bad... to Frank and Bessie Gilmore. <laughs> a bad guesser. Mm -hmm. A boy named Faye, the Johnny Cash song. Dad was a low-level con man and a high-level alcoholic. Oh, yeah. Probably produced some good children. Uh, four boys. Four boys. Oh, the Gilmore boys. That yeah, yeah. A good show. <laughs> it does seem pleasant, right? <laughs> Bessie had her own issues. Growing up in Provo, Utah, her family had been Mormon for generations. An impressive feat since even today the religion is less than 200 years old. She grew up as one of nine children in a two-room farmhouse. Her relationship with the truth was always strained. Doing four and no... a half people per room? Yeah. How do you live? I mean, you you basically live in the same situation. No, I don't. You have like 15 people living in your house somewhere out in like, I don't know, near Vegas, wherever the fuck you actually live. I'm 20 minutes past Pasadena. It's not near it's Vegas. Vegas. Everyone in LA says that. And you, you and like 50 Vegas. people live in that house. Together. Go on with your fucking story. Put your thumb on the page so you don't mo lose your spot. She grew up with that farmhouse. Her relationship with the truth was always strained, <laughs> due in no small part to being named Bessie, a name she shared with the family cow. This is the mom? This is the mom, okay. yeah. So, okay. Mm -hmm. In her girlhood, uh, she, four and a half people, with the half a person, does that mention what that would be? Is that a, 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 a fetus? <laughs> Well, no, there's nine were... people in a two-room house. <laughs> Kurt's listening to the wrong guy telling the story. He's like, don't listen to Shevsky facts. I, I mean, I still try to do this math on how they broke up the rooms. <laughs> and then she's a cow on top of it? On I know, that's the worst part. Do I have this story right? You're 100% You are dialing. on point. That's okay. Wait, so there is a cow in the story. I knew it. <laughs> As an adult, she insisted her real name was Elizabeth, named after the Queen of England, who was born 13 years after the future Mrs. Gilmore. I'm Elizabeth, the cow of England. Yeah, she was named after the cow of England. Yeah, the, the head cow. <laughs> <laughs> That's head cow to you, kid. Speaking of the Queen of England, don't you think it's great in Canada that on their money they have a picture of... Uh, Someone else's queen? Scott Thompson from the Kids in the Hole. <laughs> <Hall. laughs> in drag. Oh, God, That's I wish... That's pretty cool. That'd be awesome. The drug is approved. Bessie hated working on the farm. So brain, and would often skip reference. out on chores, instead preferring to spend her time sinking twigs, stones, and her sister's dolls in a small quicksand pit. So this lady's going to become a murderer. We can already, this is what you're leading but up to. But Faye Robert is a dude. Yeah, so. this, we're talking about mama. We're right just talking now. about mama. We're yeah. talking about the cow mama. Okay. Right? Uh, where the Faye, oh. Faye spent her childhood drowning dolls, right? This is one of those like talking to the side mics and not in the front mics or whatever, because it's one of those like stupid... Like it's you have to put it in your mouth. like upwards or whatever. <laughs> like this? Yeah, yeah, that sounds oh. perfect. Oh, like when I'm sucking dick. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those dick just sucking. Put it in mics. your mouth and then hold just... it straight up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Don't start obviously. tilting it all this way and that way. That's right. Yeah, straight why are you trying up? to bend it and crank Don't it up the tube? Don't worry about gagging. You're just gonna add more. Bend your fucking neck and back. Don't there fucking bend my <laughs> microphone. <laughs> Our mic stands are you just didn't you didn't stretch before this? Put your fucking neck into it. The mic stones are just custom. They're just HR guy. Bessie, you cow. Let's see. Bessie the cow queen. The sexy cow. Okay, so she spends her free time sinking her sister's dolls in a small quicksand pit, which is totally not creepy. That's weird. It wasn't long before she began to rebel against her parents, disobeying them by staying out late. About a week after hearing a sermon about the dangers of Ouija boards, Bessie immediately bought one. You know, I remember that from my churchy boyhood to not to do Ouija boards. There was a Ouija board sermon? Well, just things that you could bring a demon into your house, and a Ouija board would be one of them. That's one way. And then um, the other uh, way is sucking a dick. I don't know if you know this. They're they're made in a they're made in an evil factory by Milton and Bradley. Yeah. <laughs> that was always my argument when people were like they're going to bring evil spirits. Like, so this corporate company is in charge of evil spirits coming into our houses. Did you just and say uh, that a corporate I, company wouldn't be in charge of evil yeah, spirits? Yeah, you just made you the case. Yeah. For, well, I just meant I should like, have listened. I just yeah. <laughs> I just meant like a, a boardroom of dudes. I can't imagine them having any connection with supernatural stuff. I mean, Except how do you unless, think they got to the boardroom? Okay, now we're going Satanist yeah. on it. Okay, yeah. you guys are actually right. You guys are proving the point. I turned you all the way back around. I just around. imagine like a witch out in the forest How did I become you in this conversation? That's how I'm doing it. I'm swapping up. I'm confusing you. Bessie immediately bought one. When her father found her and her sister Alta playing with it, he chopped it to pieces with an axe and threatened to give them up to another family. How thick was the board that you had to chop with an axe? You could just rip them, right? 
I mean, yeah, no, you but go- you have to make a big to do about it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, if you live in that mentality, the only way to kill a demon board is with an axe. That's you right. have to use a blade, like you a can't silver just throw bullet away. kind of thing. It's yeah, 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 yeah. Later, Alta died in a sledding accident. Oh, and mother blamed Bessie for her sister's death because she had summoned a demon. So you saw it coming, man. Um, a what kind of accident? A sledding accident. Yeah. Yeah, that's how that's how demons get you. An ancient sledding demon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or perhaps a tree demon. She hit a tree. Yeah, you're you're designing an amazing tattoo right well, now. That's how, fit, uh, that's how Sonny visualizing. died. Was a, he used a the Ouija same board. demon that killed Sonny Bono and Liam Neeson's wife. <laughs> a fast coming tree. Uh, oh, fast yeah. coming tree. I'm going to come. Oh, this tree doesn't I've take seen an long. evil dead. Those... <laughs> After Alta's death, Bessie's work ethic suffered even more. She began flirting with boys. Despite her father's belief she was too young to be dating, she began seeing a young man from Salt Lake City who was a drinker and led a fast life. Do we know how old? Uh, Teenage? Late teens? I still don't understand. Are we talking about Faye Robert is who? That's, Faye, that's the son who we haven't got. We're still talking about his mom, so his, his fast and loose mother. Oh, her childhood. Because okay. this yeah, has her... so much to do into who becomes a criminal mm-hmm. is how your so parents she's the, are. Okay, okay. So it's not like, I, I started to get confused. I'm like, wait a minute. Is this like a transgendered? No. Like no. the last one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, mom's uh, a good yeah. Oh, yeah, last Mormon. episode ended with the uh, shoe jizzings. Yeah. yeah, that stayed with me oh, quite some time. Dude, the the so- so- soggy Nikes. Yeah, he still hasn't gotten his shoes clean. So, <laughs> unfortunate. No, you just buy new ones. The next time I saw Kurt, I had forgotten about that episode, but Kurt goes and he referenced like come being filled up in a shoe. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about, bro? Are you drunk right now? And then I was like, oh, yeah, come shoes. Yeah, do you have any idea how expensive uh, oh, the, new new Adidas oh, are? Yeah, the, the soggy new balances. My squishy boots. The fourth time they went out, the young man didn't bring Bessie home until 3 a.m. While she gave him a goodnight kiss, her father flung open the door, brandishing a shotgun. Who's in there with their little devil, devil shit? He cocked the gun, aimed it at Bessie, and bellowed, I'm going to blow your whore soul to hell. To his child? Yeah. What is this? The nation? Is this, is this, is no, it's, ISIS it's, it's parenting, good, it's, huh? No, it's, yeah, no, it's protecting your daughter. It's parenting. Is he cool with the dude? Isn't that ISIS style? <laughs> you go on home, son. I'll handle this. Yeah, don't you worry. I know that, I know that she trapped you here <laughs> with her, her demon vagina. That's right. Did you make it play with a Ouija board? Answer me. Ever since she summoned that thing, she's been a problem. Oh, man. But luckily. But luckily. One of Bessie's brothers pulled out the gun from her father's hands. Bessie and the brother received severe whippings. The young suitor never returned. So the, all the siblings turned into criminals and people with a bunch of problems, right? Because these parents are so, fucking pieces of shit. Wait a minute. So they pull, <laughs> they pull yeah. up. He bursts with the shotgun. Mm-hmm. Brother comes out and they stop and then mm-hmm. he beats them both. Mm-hmm. And then the boy, the date's like, hey, so uh, I'm just going to see you guys tomorrow. Uh, okay, Bessie, call me. I got to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> He's like, my Uber's here. I know this is like 60 years before that happens, but I... You guys are having dinner. I'm going to go. She still calls the dad Mr. by his last name or whatnot. Like, thanks for having me over. Soon after, Bessie moved to Salt Lake City with several other girls to get away from her family. (laughs) To escape the religious morons? Yeah, right? (gasps) I'll go to Salt Lake where it's safe and people are free thinkers. Where they they have two, three beer. Awesome. (laughs) By the summer of 1937, 24-year-old Bessie was living in a small hotel room, scraping together barely enough to survive as a housekeeper and part-time hand model. Mm, did she get a lot of hand jobs? What happened? Why are you looking at me like that? Go on with your story. She made friends <laughs> with a waitress named Anita, who was a serious drinker. One day they went to the Utah hotel where Anita lived with her boyfriend, known only as Daddy. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. Describe her physically and how they fucked up. They were supposed to go shopping. But after Anita had a few too many, she decided to instead show off her new typewriter, a gift from Daddy. She picked it up and promptly dropped it on the floor, breaking it into pieces. Wait, wait, wait. She dropped her own gift or her friend? Her, Yeah, so they go back to Anita's house. Mm -hmm. Anita's uh, hotel she lives with Daddy in. Anita new typewriter now. Yeah, she does. Then she dropped Yeah, Then Anita gets drunk and drops it. Daddy, an older man in his late 40s, returned home at that very moment, introduced himself to Bessie as Frank Gilmore... And then promptly told Anita to pack her shit and go. Wait, wait. Did, did, did something in the story just get tied together? That, that, are you, what are you telling us? What happened? A few days later, Bessie bumped into Frank. Frank in front. Gilmore girls came in. Yes. There you go. See what's happening now? Her Threads husband. are being sewn. No, wait, wait, wait. Is it? Dun, dun, dun. I'm so confused. Her husband is Frank Gilmore. She's going to marry him. Where's the Queen of England here and Faye Dunaway? What's going Bessie on? Bessie ran off. Bessie the cow queen. Yep. Ran off. After her Ouija demon deaths. That's right. And her horrible parents. Then her friend dropped a typewriter that was bought to her by daddy. Daddy turns out to be Frank Gilmore. 
And the guy we're talking about today, uh, maybe might be their kid. Frank, a few days later, Bessie bumped into Frank in front of the Utah in front of the Utah hotel, sporting a brown suit and a dirty white fedora. Oh, that sounds so great. After some small talk, they decided to go out for coffee, where Frank talked about being an ad salesman for Utah Magazine and his travels about the country. Bessie was taken with his confident demeanor and dashing good looks. But Frank suddenly announced he was getting married the next day and left. Frank was getting married to the, the chick with the typewriter, right? Just some chick. Oh, all right. About a year later, Bessie ran into Frank again, standing in front of the same hotel. Apparently, the marriage didn't last because he asked her out to a picture show. Ooh. On their second date to a bar, Frank regaled her with stories of his past in show business. In 1910... He went by Laffo the Clown. You can't get away with it these days, right? You tell a chick that you just met like how great your show business is. Hold on, like, wait a minute. That, yeah. Cause that is my, I'm using that as my stage name, Laffo the, the Clown. Is that, is that a it problem? Does... That better be public domain at this point. <laughs> Laffo, by the way, great, great clown name, dude. Laffo? <laughs> well, right. I mean, I have never heard a less creative clown name <laughs> in my fucking life. I gotta think, what's a good, <laughs> clowny? funny, Laffo. How about Clowny the Clown? Laffo. I'm Shudo, the basketball player. That's I mean, right. I mean, even John Wayne Gacy put a little effort into his clown. I know. One of the, clown disguise. One of the greatest clown names of all time. So, Who was move. it? Bozo, wasn't it? No. Bozo is the, is, uh, you know, the kid's show clown. What was his? His was something also similar. It was like a, sir, s- a, s- a silly, cute name for a guy. Hey, was... Schmidt. Schmidt. He can't hear us. Hey, what was John Wayne Gacy's clown name? Tickles? John Wayne Gacy, the murderer. What, what was his clown name? I don't, know. I don't know it. What? This is good radio. <laughs> well, don't don't turn it into a quiz while we're trying to do the po- what? Pogo, 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 Pogo. Pogo. I was po- I was not far off. With Put that, a though. little effort, Laffo. Yeah, <laughs> Laffo. Laffo is a little on the red nose. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> see how I did that? I see Come on, I'm beautiful. doing some chef skis. Okay. Uh, he was also a tightrope walker in the Barnum and Bailey Circus. But drunkenly ruined his ankle climbing a chair pyramid. But drunkenly. Then he became a lion tamer, which went well until a leopard decided to take a swipe at him, leaving Frank with a scar across his cheek and forehead. Which got him even more pussy. That's right, bro. Hell yeah. Then Frank moved to L.A. to work as a stuntman in silent movies, which went well until a night when he got into a car accident while drinking with uh, Tom Mix, Hollywood's first big cowboy hero, and re-injuring his leg. That's like a typical stuntman like lifestyle story, right? Mm-hmm. Where they, they got in a car accident from being drunk. Like, you're a stuntman. Yeah. You're drinking with the, one of the actors. And you course... should be able to get out of that drunken car accident without any injuries. Right? Like if you're a, a good stuntman. The car rolls, and then you get out, and they go, can we do that again? I think again? that's how you do stunts. You just drink a lot to make your body relax. <laughs> yeah. You just flow <laughs> with right, it. All right, bring the something. Like, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> After a few dates, Frank turned to Bessie and said, why don't we go to Sacramento? You can meet my mother and we can get married while we're out there. For the comedy festival. And she replied, okay, that would be fine. And that's how their romance that's truly That's how they started. Let's go to Sacramento. That is the old Netflix and chill. You want to yeah. go to Sacramento? If you you know want to go I mean? to Sacramento and get married? Also I'm, finger a little bit? Yeah, as I say, if he goes, do you want to go to Tijuana? What does that mean? So they went to Sacramento where they were married by Frank's mother, also named Faye, a spiritualist and fortune teller whom they hadn't seen in 18 years. A few minutes after the nuptials were finished, Bessie learned that Frank had a son when Faye happened to mention he was living nearby. They moved in with Faye, and soon after, Frank disappeared for the first of many times, saying that he had worked somewhere and owed a guy some money, and left Bessie to learn all uh, about all the parts of his past that he had never discussed. So he was like just vague with her, and then he would just leave? And... Yeah, I gotta go. I got some. I'm, uh, I owe so a guy a cigarette. So you have like six families or something? That yeah. Sounds, that's it sounds just... like you got like four families. Faye told her about his several other abandoned children and six or seven previous possibly current wives. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's got to be like a bigamy. They call it bigamy. Is that what it's called? No. Bigamy. Yeah, that's no, that's a uh, yeah, that's the Foo Fighters album. It's all about how <laughs> that's a Japanese it's all about way how Dave Grohl. Favorite the song of Big of Me. Uh, when I talk about it, I think about it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's all about was, how Dave Grohl it was, uh, has uh, Godzilla's bio- autobiography. <laughs> big of me. I'm a so bigger than uh, <laughs> Big of me. You to talk about it. Oh no no. no. <laughs> big of me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, uh, the Bobby, City, Bobby Lee was here for just a moment. You Get know, out of here, Bobby. By the way, Salt Lake City, mm-hmm. uh, uh, there's probably a lot of that because they still did, they hadn't gotten rid of polygamy at that point, had they? Or had they? Maybe they had. Uh, this is 19. Oh, early, you're right. You're 1900s. Sorry. They're probably. Had... I'm thinking of uh, the Bessie the Cow shit is about. Uh, oh, that like was another woman? Older older times. You know? uh, it's like a in... cow named Bessie is like, it sounds like 1860 to me. We're in 1940s, right? 
By well, this point, we're, I think, early, mid-1930s. Okay, so we're, we're yeah, not no. even at World War II yet. Mm-hmm. Okay. He, had yeah. to, he said he was leaving because he had to make some money or got money and then went to war. Mm-hmm. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how hard it was. His name is Uncle Sam. That's how hard it was back in the Frank's day. Frank's mom was convinced this was a different marriage as it's the only one where Frank had used his almost real name. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're getting better. It's gradual. It's a gradual thing. You can't just turn what the page. What was his real name? Perfect. I actually have no idea. I don't think anyone, there's any historical record that has his, his real name written down. His, his real name is Schmank McGill. <laughs> <laughs> Faye also let slip that she was a descendant of the Royal French House of Bourbon. Ah, oui. But her family had changed their name and moved to the States. And then Faye went to the World Fair in Chicago, where she met the man who had become Frank's father. If I told you who it was, it would shock you, she said, noting that Frank's real last name was Weiss, and his dad was killed after being hit in the stomach. Ooh, Houdini. Bessie did some digging and figured out that Frank's real father was Elric Weiss, who later changed his name to Harry Houdini. What? what? I was just joking. Are you serious? Of course, Faye was full of shit. Oh. She had no real lineage. <laughs> She'd never gone to the World's Fair. Oh. And Frank's real father was a man from Omaha named Harry Gilmore. A man from Omaha. Yep. That's right. So Houdini has nothing actual to do with this story. So a you know guy the fucked and... up part? He lived with them. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what are you selling, young Frank? Fa- Get out of here, Harry. I'm talking about Frank Fox. <laughs> great sitcom, huh? <laughs> Living with Harry. Yeah, we get it, Harry. The quarter disappears. Awesome. <laughs> Why don't you make one appear? How about that? Oh God, I know, right? If you're so, if you're so psychic, go to Vegas. That's what they always tell me. I love that there's this gullible chick is married to two like two just bold faced liars who are like, yeah, no, we're we've been to the moon before. Don't you don't you believe me? It's like me if my wife lied all the time and made stuff up, but I would just be like, yeah, she just told me, dude. Yeah, man. My we're, father is John Glenn, so I think I know a little, <laughs> a little something about. After a month, Frank returned, bought a wood paneled Pontiac, wood paneled Pontiac, and yeah. moved Bessie back to Utah. She figured it was time for Frank to meet her family, which did not go well. Partly because of Frank's age and partly because Bessie's Mormon family was convinced that Frank had, was rightly convinced that Frank had been in prison. Could, did she introduce Frank as daddy to everybody? Well, how did they know? <laughs> how did they know he had been in prison? Like, why do you think? Uh, I think because of he just is that. Like, this is one of the guys walk in the room and you're like, if you're, if you're not convinced that you were named after a queen who was born 13 years after you, yeah. that you're like, this guy's kind of a giant piece of shit. Yeah. His neck tattoo yeah. is pretty uh, telling. Well, yeah, the just teardrop like, yeah, is kind of telling us something here. Get three teardrops. <laughs> this was awarded to me by the Queen of England, the first one. <laughs> hey, Dad, I want you to meet my boyfriend. Here's Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Pleased to meet you. <laughs> you can call me Daddy. Oh, boy. <laughs> he tells his dad that. This gets... you know, No, no, just Daddy. This gets really confusing. Which one? Hold on, does she want? Does she want to hug or does she want to fuck? I don't know which one of us she's asking now, right this now. This thug-like tab- tattoo was from King Tupac of the Compton Isles. Of, <laughs> He's just lifting up course. his old-fashioned white button-up T-shirt. So the two eventually left and began driving all over the country, rarely staying anywhere for longer than a month, and leaving all their possessions behind at every stop. That's because Frank's ad sales job was a total scam. Yeah, it was a lie called one hundred percenting, where he would simply sell the ads pocket the money, and never print a thing, then oh. leave the city. It sounds like a, t- a Tony Robbins kind of thing you're supposed to do every day, 100%ing. Yeah. Get out there and 100% everything. I do 110%. Point. I would have stayed and got one more percent. Mm-hmm. 10 more That's percent. That's good business. 10 more percent. <laughs> That's why Kurt has that good insurance. That's yeah. right. That's how you do it. You got to want it. I want 110% coverage or I'm out. In early 1939, Bessie became pregnant. how that happened? Describe it. <laughs> I think they were pl- they were playing Yahtzee, and uh, she hit double twelves. <laughs> oh yeah, double twelve milliliters. They continued traveling, briefly settling in L.A. to give birth to Frank Jr. And within a year, they were back on the road when Bessie was pregnant again, and she gave birth to their next child in Texas under a fake name, Faye Robert Confton. Why'd she give why why a fake name? Because they were on the lamb. Oh. Because of her husband's fake like mm-hmm. sc- scamming job, what does he do? What's the hundred percenting? What does he do? He sells things and then don't doesn't exist. deliver them. He goes yeah. like, "I'm getting you ad space in this magazine." Then yeah. he takes the money and then he's like, "Your ad's gonna be in the New York Times." Oh my god, I that's genius. That could actually get us out of a lot of financial binds right now. Yeah, Sell, yeah. selling web web banner ads and whatnot. As soon as they crossed the state line, they ripped up the birth certificate and renamed Faye Robert Kaufman Gary Gilmore. They spent several more years. Gary back. Gilmore, the mm-hmm. fucking shooter. The guy from the in the ta- was that was that guy shoot everybody from a tower? Or am I thinking of the wrong person? That's a different person. Are no, you the Dallas guy? Yeah, different person. Or are you just saying that right now? What's so his name? No, 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 no
Okay. Yeah, that but one's for but sure. But this is about the Gilmore Girls TV show, though. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. They spent several more years bouncing around the country, pulling scams. Be- Bessie briefly moved back home with her parents when, while Frank did a stint in prison for one of his fake ad sales. Before they moved to Portland, Oregon, is she, is in she cool with him being like a, a scumbag, and she just supports him, or is it just like she's just that I think nowhere she's to run because she's a wife that just you know she is a cow. Yeah. Oh, yeah that, if you've been paying attention, <laughs> yeah. how do you feel like? How come you couldn't being. tell? And she just goes, yeah. "Honey, will you please stop doing that?" Well, I. What about the salt lick? <laughs> Yeah, cows are autistic, uh, as Temple Grand in the TED Talk explained. Yeah. And so they don't really understand things like <laughs> ad sa- abstract <laughs> concepts and such. Oh, dude. From an early age, Gary Gilmore did not play well with others. <laughs> Dropping a Temple Grand in reference. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear that name again. Oh, dude. He and two of his brothers hung aboard from a tree for a game of darts, and when their youngest brother asked to join, Gary agreed, but only if they used a new set of rules. The darts go at my butt. The youngest Gilmore would stand by the target, while the others competed to see who could get the closest without actually hitting him. So I was I was close to what you're saying. Close enough. Wow. Gary went first, landing about six inches away. The two other brothers got theirs closer, so not to be outdone, Gary threw his next dart directly in his brother's foot. Ah! Oh, yeah. A dart to the foot? Actually, the toe, specifically. Why? Because it was there? Yeah. What, well, were, weren't you a brother? I, yeah, but my brother is much younger than me. It yeah, so he's an easy, so you can't retaliate. <laughs> 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 yeah. Gary did play well with his dog, Queen, a half husky, quarter chow, quarter German shepherd, who he would take for walks around the neighborhood, where she attacked at least 15 people, killed two other dogs, and nearly ripped out the throat of one man who had chased Gary with a what? meat cleaver. Oh, okay, well, that has to happen, though. Yeah, if someone yeah. chases you, your dog's going to have to kill them. Yeah. Well, but did he throw a dart at the guy's foot? That's Probably. A good argument. Probably. Bessie and Frank were never content in one place for long, moving the family back to Utah when Gary was in elementary school and leaving Queen with a neighbor. Gary missed his friends and began to act out even more. At 11 years old, he got in a fist fight with a fully grown man. He made friends with a group of boys who enjoyed swearing, smoking, stealing, and spouting off about guns. The outsiders. They really loved guns. So much that when Gary was still a child, he was caught playing Russian roulette with a pistol that he insisted wasn't loaded. Was it loaded, though? I'm not sure if it was loaded or not. Okay. That's still a bad thing to practice, right? Russian roulette? Yeah, no, I'm I'm just seeing that. Look, if I'm going to survive the real thing, I have to practice with an unloaded one first. That's right. You know how Russian roulette works. It's called safety, mom. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Look, I was obsessed with with the deer hunter when I was 12, too. The family decided after that that Utah wasn't working, so they went back to Portland, where Frank's discipline moved from a moral from a normal whooping to a full-on ass kicking. Spankings were replaced. Well, he with can fight grown men now, so I mean, yeah. You... Look, if you uh... <laughs> at eleven, he fought a grown man. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, you start. It took you a minute to upload that when you're like, I oh, hope wait. the man won, or he should have fucking. He can never show his face. You had an eleven year old kid kick the shit out of me. <laughs> you have to leave town after that. <laughs> I had to go after him with a cleaver. Then his dog kicked my ass. He has pe- like every time a school bus passes by, I got the shakes. <laughs> They, uh, oh yeah, so spankings are replaced with razor strops, belts, and sometimes fists. What did you say? What's some belts? Razor strops. Razor strops. It's a long leather. uh, Oh, that you you sharpen your razor on? Yes, exactly. They started coming for things as small as forgetting to mow the lawn or coming home from school five minutes late. You said coming a lot in that sentence. Yes. Uh, When dad discovered someone stole money off his desk, none of the boys would admit to it, so Frank Jr. and Gary were flailed with a strap until they bled through their jeans. Oh my God. Why? I mean, What's wrong? I don't know. It's just very Catholic churchy. In the early 1950s, tween age Gary began to embrace the true <laughs> rebel culture of time as a, of the time as a greaser. That's what I was feeling. Like I said, outsiders. Like yeah. I'm Wait, like a little... I, don't, I feel like I know this story, and I know he's not that shooter, but I've heard of this. Uh, well, we'll see. He's a killer or something. We'll see how this goes at the end. You're watching spoiler episode of crime. No, but Gary, I mean, it's a famous thing, Gary This Gilmore. is your life, Kurt Metzger. You're Gary Gilmore, and we've been programming you to forget that for a long time. I, Congratulations. You know, when, you, when I remember what he did, I'm going to go, oh, that's right, because I know I know who that guy is. He I put his it. hair in a pompadour and played Elvis and Fats Domino records, wore a motorcycle jacket, boots, smoked, drank booze and cough syrup, and began skipping school. Like half of my Mexican friends in high school in the 90s <laughs> they loved it they called him being rebels i'm his, a rebel his grades were terrible despite having an iq of 133 because he thought failing was funny is, is 133 a good uh, iq yeah it's also a good toll it's road off the uh, yeah it's fine five freeway gary and his friends hung out in the woods behind their school where they would entice girls from joining IQ. them yeah it's like fucking seven points away from a genius iq it's what is 140 genius how do they, yeah. how do 160 they... is like crazy high okay. and then uh you know 
how do you quantify intelligence? Can we start? You that? really don't. You really not you. Can't. That's <laughs> what we do. It's, <laughs> it, you know, if you can't. What it is 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 to determine who's the like uh, most slow and who's like super bright. That's yeah. all I really can tell you. But so like one thirty is like you're like oh that's a smart person, right? But it, all, everything in between you really doesn't mean anything. It just means like you can you can really handle some cunning uh, projects. It's and, just and to know who's retarded. And yeah, who's, yeah. yeah, basically. Genius. Who can add numbers I, quickly? I swear to God, that's why it was invented. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just okay. a TARD test. So, so that's what they, they called that initially, it. and they were like, that's not a good marketing. The TARD test? Yeah, not a good marketing Dude, technique. the double T. Hey, throw a dart at a TARD is what I propose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if he gets out of the way, he's got a good IQ. Gary and his friends hung out in the woods behind their school where they would entice young girls, in a, or entice girls into joining them with the promise of beer or whiskey. Then Gary whipped out a stolen camera and talked them into posing in the nude before passing the pictures around school as soon as they were developed. Gary was punk AF, dude. Yeah, he was kind of a dick. A punk dick. Punk dick? Yes. It was pierced. (laughs) But booze, leather, and nudie pics are only so cool. The coolest thing you could do in the 1950s was join a gang. Yeah, the greasers, the jets, and you snap a lot. We're gonna one of them dancing, singing gangs. <laughs> so Gary started... couldn't sing, so he was thrown out of the gang. Right. <laughs> when you're a jet, you're a jet for life. <laughs> you didn't bring your tap shoes to the drive-by. <laughs> Whippy and Cobras, you remember? Them? <laughs> yeah, they had the coolest jackets, at least. The... Norm McDonald's fucking sketch where the, they keep breaking into song. You're like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, Whippy and Cobras. <laughs> So he started hanging out with the meanest gang in town. Let a Cobra Cobe. The Broadway Boys. The Broadway Boys? Yeah. yeah. That's the gayest name they, in town. Yeah, they, well, they had uh, late stage AIDS, so it was very dangerous. <laughs> they were no, notorious. Find Possibly me hepatitis. somebody to fuck. Find me somebody to fuck. Well, they fuck each other, but it's, yeah. they get their blood on you. That's how they, get, that's how they jump you in. Yeah. Do they say anything? Do they like, say where do you think gang bang comes from? Oh my golly. Exactly. In the words of Frank Black. Yeah, there you go. Wow. They like to steal cars, sell drugs, and run prostitutes. Gary bragged to his whole, his school friends about his gang connections. Wait, what? Run pro It's when you <laughs> I imagine they put they make them race. Yeah, you go behind you go behind Come on. You go behind them with a, a with one of those loud things in a in a go- golf cart and uh, you just start a pistol. Them. Come on, prostitutes! Faster prostitutes! You're not even close to your time yesterday. <laughs> Sponsored by New Balance. And they have the squishy, oh, the squishy cum filled New Balances. Uh, Gary bragged to his friends about his gang the connections. The relay. But there was a small problem. But they use a dildo that they hand back and forth. Go! He wasn't actually a member. Oh, fuck. The gang offered him a way in. All the middle schooler needed to do for membership was help them get some guns. This is in middle school? Yeah, he's like 13. See, we've had gun problems forever in this I country. Know. So Gary did the only thing that made sense. And Join started an after-school paper route. To like to make money to get the guns? It wasn't about the money. Oh, it was just about the paper? To and break s- in to get guns? And said he figured out it'd be a great <coughs> way to case homes that might mm. have guns he could steal. Mm. Oh, nice. And then make some money on the side from the paper route. After a few weeks of intelligence gathering, 13-year-old Gary began breaking into houses, but he couldn't find any guns. So instead, he stole money, pornography, and woman's underwear. Mm, okay. Sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, let's see that. Let's see the little basket of goodies that he got. Well, imagine that sexy ass 1940s bloomer underwear. That... <laughs> Ooh, ladies' under things. Like, is that a Laurel and Hardy underpants? I can't like, even tell. It's like like a doily cover for an adult diaper. The way those things look, they're pretty. Look at this polka dotted tent that I found. This is awesome. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something, fellas. Yeah. Like in Muppet Babies, those nanny socks. That's what the underwear was back then. Sure, it might look goofy, but they all smell the same. You know what I'm saying? How you doing? Eventually, he decided that was too much work, so he broke the window of a pawn shop with a brick and stole a twenty-two rifle and some ammo. Now that he had a gun, he didn't need the Broadway boys to be cool. Oh, fuck. He started his own gang? He showed off his new toy by shooting it in the woods and towards bystanders, laughing at his hilarious prank. Oh, my God. That's deadly. Well, he didn't shoot people. He just shot, like, at them, kind of. He said towards people. That's like the dart game. Yeah, like the dart game. This I'm is not where... going to hit you. Just I mean, I did hit my foot, my brother's foot once. how close I can get to hitting you. They yeah. say that a twenty-two round, like, it bounces around inside your body because it's not big enough to blow through it at certain mm-hmm. spots. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if this is proven. It's not a Mythbusters. But well, like... mother says that if you do that... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Eventually, he grew bored of the rifle and threw it into a swimming hole. In February of 1955, Gary finally quit school and hitchhiked to Texas with a friend, hoping to see the town where he'd been born. But even in 1954, hitchhiking was creepy. And along the way, they were picked up by a man who tried to bang them. <laughs> it actually says bang. I mean, that's what I wrote. I chose the word oh, bang. That's the way what did it say? How does it worded? I mean, made a pass at them. Oh, okay. But I, I took some artistic license and said bang because that's what he was going for. He wasn't like, I'd love to hold your hands at some point. He it was, was like, simple, I want to A simpler some... time, though. 
Yeah. Maybe the guy's like, I'd like, to, will you make an honest man of me, <laughs> Gary Gilmore? <laughs> You I'd know, like I've to meet tra- your parents tra- with your father's permission, Gary. I'd like to make an honest man of you. <laughs> a lot of people are going to be called daddy in this story. I've been trolling tell. this freeway at two in the morning for, for months trying to find someone to settle down with me and just build a home. That's right. I want to make some man babies. You ready? Gary was not interested in being banged, so he beat the man and stole his car. <laughs> yeah. With nothing better to do, the friends began running a poker game out of a hotel, making enough money to keep themselves stocked up on booze and hookers. Until they got homesick and decided to go back to Portland. Oh, Portland, right? Is mm-hmm. the story about the beginnings of the Antifa criminals? Yes. Okay. Where Gary started a small car theft ring. They would steal a car, repaint it, and cruise around for a while before stealing another. Uh, in May, he was caught stealing a car, but the judge released him for his, to his father with a warning. Two weeks later, he was back in court for another car theft, and this time, he was sent to a reform school for boys. Mm. On the first night... As he lay in bed. Oh, no. Gary noticed a strange sound. Fat, 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 fat. Before he could identify the combination of rubbing, rapid breathing, and odd giggling, <laughs> something warm splattered across his face. What? The, the, he got a money shot? Then another, running into his eyes. What? Oh. What the fuck, Slayton? Sorry, Mom and everyone. I this mean, was are Gary's... we going to read hot stories or talk about crime, guys? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, a sexy podcast now? Jesus. Dude, this was you know, Gary's introduction. I am really turned on right now. Can we stop? <laughs> yeah, what, what kind of camp is this? This was Gary's introduction to the school's cum fights. A couple what? nights a week after lights out, the boys would sneak out of bed, beat off as quickly as they could, and throw cum on each other's faces. Oh my God. Couldn't they just do what normal dudes do and come and be quiet about it and just go to sleep later and pretend like they weren't jacking off you the don't next wanna, morning? But waste not want not, Chevsky. <laughs> It doesn't mean you need to fling it on people's face and make it look like a cinnabon. These are future Eagle Scouts who are taught to make sure that they never take... Oh, my God. Shockingly, Gary left reform school a year later, ready to continue his life of crime. He began hanging out at a gay bar with a reputation for allowing teenagers inside... To comment on his face? Hey, that's Gary. He'll let you come on his face. Although he later insisted he never took part in any sexual activities with the boys. He befriended an older man named John, who let Gary and his friends hang out at his house, stash stolen goods, and bring girls over in exchange for blowjobs. Wait, so he would... So I don't know. I don't know for sure who was blowing John. Can you imagine being so horny? And I, I've thought about this before, mm-hmm. like if I, uh, like when I was a teenager, I was like, sure. would I be willing... Like we used to have this game and be like... What's the gayest thing you'd do to fuck the hottest girl? Yes! Yeah. So yeah. I was like... It's like <laughs> yeah, that and cum fights are pretty much my whole childhood. <laughs> It's like bum fights, except much worse. Yeah. It's like so bum much more disturbing and bad for society than bum fights. Yeah, take a hammer, go kill a bum. Oh, Don't come on you anyone. You thought Dr. Things. Phil was appalled at the concept of a bum fight. <laughs> now, what you need to do... Why is that on a game show yet? What's the gayest thing you'd do to fuck the hottest girl in the world? I think it is probably in Japan or Norway or something like that. But... I would say, I would tell her I love her. <laughs> Dude, Dude, that's it. <laughs> Seriously, that's pretty. That's... That was right there. It was so beautiful. <laughs> that's the gayest thing I'd be willing <laughs> the to do. thing I would do. <laughs> Tell a woman I love her. Oh, it's so funny, dude. Oh, fuck. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking mo, I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Oh, it's so pure and true, though. It's so funny. <laughs> Gary started breaking into stores, looking for drugs, money, and guns, spending the money on parties that ran until the morning. On one of these nights at around 2 a.m., Gary and his friend Clyde were on their way back from a Little Richard concert. Oh, dude, yeah. When Long Gary's came car Sally. ran out of gas. Oh, for her. Well, Rather than buying more, they simply stole a different car. Let's just siphon it. You're all into it sucking to pay seems... for things. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, holy shit. Like, fine, I'll just get a new car. I'm like, no, I think we can put just gas in this car. What are you, an Arab prince? Hey, we can steal the gas. Like, <laughs> no, fuck it. It's broken. It's broken. I swear to God, we just got to put more fuel. What? I always do this when I run out of gas. You go on, wait, you can put more in? You're the one being oh, wasteful. Shit. Man, I've been doing this wrong for years. Wasting an opportunity. Well, we already we already stole this one, so why not? <laughs> Might as well keep going. If you felt like all cars were your cars, though, you'd act like you'd act like uh, like Last Man on Earth style. You'd just grab a new car instead yeah. of filling up the gas. You'd be like, all right, I'm just gonna grab a new car. I've all never siphoned gas. Neither have I. But you have sucked. It's fair, right? So just imagine sucking, but yeah. instead of come gas. F- that's yeah. It comes out easier. Literally. Gary and his. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you had a hard time. I was just trying to. I was just trying to to come back because we already 
Patreon come Olympics or sex Olympics. Oh yeah, we talked, I, I we got, talked about I got, that on Patreon. I was trying to remember which riff was rich. Yeah. You know which saying? which rich was rich? Shut your face. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> they were quickly caught spending a few weeks in jail before they got off somehow with only a year probation. In July of 57, Gary and Clyde broke into an office building and found a 32 automatic pistol. Gary, not realizing it was loaded and cocked, accidentally shot his friend in the stomach. Oh, my God. That's like the Houdini thing coming right back, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm. But no matter how much Clyde's family tried to convince him to press charges, Clyde stayed loyal to his pal. Mm. But the police were still able to jail. Did he die? No, he didn't die. He, he got, got shot, shot in the stomach. stomach? Yeah, he gets shot in the stomach sometimes. You never been shot in the stomach? I thought that's like the dude, spot that you're going to die. Dude, after this, we'll finish up. I'll shoot you in the stomach, and you'll be fine, and we'll see how it goes. Gary's you know? like, dude, I've been shot in the face with worse shit than bullets. That's yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah, you're like, lucky. I wish they shot me in the face with a bullet. You know what else feels hot when it hits you? <laughs> yeah, you ever, you ever taken hot, le- hot lead in the face? Mm-hmm. That's nothing. Mm-hmm. You ever had a milk missile hit your eyeball? After his release, Gary started working in an appliance company. About a year later, he was arrested for having sex with a minor. <laughs> what, what what were they mining? Coal or was it? I know you're not supposed to have sex with them because they're in blackface. That's right. <laughs> they can't. They they wheeze a lot when they're when they're feeling hot and heavy. But he escaped the police station by jumping out of a window. <laughs> what was a minor in those days though? Like a seven year old? Because I mean, this is the old days, right? Didn't yeah. Everyone... Well, he so he's like seventeen, eighteen. And so a minor she... must have been like eleven. Because first of all. Pe- People just legit got married at like. Well, he yeah. got caught because she got would pregnant. Adop- you would adopt. Oh, that's how he got caught with but for it. In the old days, you would adopt. You'd be like, "I'm adopting my lover." Yeah, you Is do. That right? You do. Oh, a yeah, dude. Like, like Jerry Lewis, a bunch of the. I think Elvis yeah. adopted his one of his wives. Like, you just be like, "May that I have your awesome. daughter's hand in marriage?" I'm like, "Well, she's she's a kid." You'd be well, like, you well, know, I'll the best adopt part about too. that is in the modern day times, if you adopt your woman instead of marrying her, you can tell her what to do now. So, because now you can't tell a wife what to do anymore. But you can adopt a kid. You can tell a kid what to do. do. Ask Woody Allen. So, this is my advice to everybody. Guys, don't get married. Adopt (laughs) adopt your girl. That's right. Yeah. Adopt. And then be like, yeah, no, if if it... If, if, if you want your phone pay, phone bill paid. Adopt your girl. Yeah. That's your hashtag. Adopt yeah. your girl. Yeah, that's that's the the new way. I feel... I, you know what? I would not be surprised if like a bunch of like MRA dudes start being like, actually, that's a pretty good plan. What's the MRAs? The men's rights activist guys. Oh. The guys who are like, you know, men are being held down too much these days. That's right. Let's, uh, so Gary escapes the police station by jumping out a window, like making it all the way to San Diego and staying with an old girlfriend under a new name. Mm, San Diego. In a single month, he managed to get arrested five more times, so he now fled to Texas. But unfortunately, the El Paso police quickly discovered who he was and shipped him back home to face the music. He did not go to jail, instead paid the hospital bills and a few years of child support up front. But then the courts remembered that he had an old car theft charge, and in September of 1960, he went into Oregon State Correctional Institution. So he did end up going away. So they started off by being like, all right, you just got to pay these bills, and yeah. you're good. And he's like, whoo. And they're like, ah, oh, never mind. We're locking you up. You have time to serve. He returned home a year later, just in time to spend Christmas with his family, before heading back to jail for drinking and driving. Six months later, back out. Prostitutes, drugs. And then back inside for robbing a man of $11.00. Spending six, 1964 to 1972 in prison. And $11 in the 60s was what? $89 like, today. Thank you. So he went in for eight years for $89. What an idiot. This yep. guy's an idiot criminal. Do you notice that? Is anyone noticing they that? They usually are. Yeah. He gets released, picked up again for armed robbery, this time earning nine more years. But luckily for Gary... But luckily. Even in the 70s, prisons were overcrowded. So on April 9th, 1976, he was released from prison very early under a condition that he remained in the state of Utah with his Mormon family. Mm. He started dating... We need more room for black guys that smoke dope. Yeah, it's, I mean, what what else is a prison Jazz musicians and the people that write the Cockarocha song. He started dating a beautiful young woman in Provo, Nicole, with two children who seemed perfect for Gary until she decided that he would never hit her again and left him to go live with her beating her? He's a dick. Oh, you just lost all of our listeners to supporting this guy. I mean, he were they all on board beforehand? Wife. Probably. Beforehand, he was pretty cool, right? He was just a James Dean, the sausage dude with the leather jacket, you know? Sure. And then now you're like, oh, he beats his bitches? Fuck this guy. On a sweaty night late in July. Unless she's a... Not bitch. unlike how hot the studio is. That's mm. right. Gary drove over to Nicole's mom's house to try to win her back. Instead, he found her younger sister, April, mm. who agreed to help him look for his estranged lover. Is she under your skirt? The two drove around <laughs> aimlessly for hours. <laughs> You're not far off. All Eventually right. arriving at a gas station in the small town of Orem. Inside, he found a 26-year-old attendant working the register alone. Gary pulled out a 22 automatic and ordered him to empty the cash from his pockets, then led him to the bathroom and forced him onto the ground. Bringing the gun to the base of his skull, he pulled the trigger saying, Whoa. this one is for me. Are you serious? You went to kill this dude? And a second time, this one is for Nicole. 
I'm pretty sure the attendant had no idea who Nicole was. What was the was the were there rounds in the gun? Oh yeah, no, he shot him in the head with a with a bullet. He killed him? Oh yeah, like a lot. So he was able to like rob him. Wait, but still... did the guy go back to work? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Kurt. How is this? But, but was he okay? <laughs> uh, you have to ask these things, because sometimes Slayton puts some surprises. But he was okay, right? <laughs> then he and April went to see did one flew the cuckoo's nest. Did he die? Whoa, one flew the cuckoo's nest. They're into they're into Nicholson films. Yeah. And they went to a holiday inn to smoke weed. How do murderers smoke weed? I always feel like weed's such a friendly well, you person. You smoke weed drug. after. You don't smoke weed before. That's I the know, number one rule of murder. Like whenever gangsters like smoke weed, you're like, but weed's like a friendly dude's drug. You know what I mean? Also, why would you, after a murder, you smoke weed? Are you be like, we're going to get caught, man? <laughs> <laughs> like, does it make you paranoid as shit? Yeah, I'd have an anxiety attack. I'd be like, what have I done if I smoked weed after I killed someone? Gary tried to make a move on April, but she was too freaked out and refused. So the next night, Gary walked into the lobby of a different hotel. I'll, I'll show her ordered the Mormon man behind the counter to lie on the floor and shot him in the back of the head. Did, did he die? Definitely very dead too. Okay, just the technical, yeah. I'm just asking for bet, our listeners. I bet he didn't say no. <laughs> you know, pe- to be fair, Shavsky people have been shot in the head and not died on the show before. Right? Mm. That is fair. Thank you, Slate. But these guys died a lot. Okay. so They're all dead. So they've uh, killed, so now he's, a, he's, he's guilty of murder twice now, right? Gary so, p- walks out right? of the, yep, two murders. Okay. Walked out of the, with the cash box under his arm, tried to hide the pistol, but accidentally pulled the trigger and blew a hole in his thumb. Yeah, you fucking deserve that, Gary, you piece of shit. No more hitchhiking for you, bitch. So he drove over to his friend's house, to his friend's cousin's house, who, seeing the shot thumb, realized Gary was probably the murderer and called called the cops and stalled him long enough for them to set up a roadblock where Gary was easily arrested by a SWAT team. Well, good for the cousin to have the balls, because that'd be scary to try to, like, stall a murderer and call the cops behind their back. You've seen Harrison Ford and What Lies Beneath. You don't fuck with murderers. Gary went on trial, but the case was open and shut. Not only was the evidence ironclad, but the jury was encouraged to convict him after he spent most of the trial staring at them menacingly. I know how I'll get out of this. (laughs) (laughs) You. You. If I ever get out of prison, you're dead. We haven't even sentenced you yet. Your family's dead. (laughs) He was quickly found guilty and sentenced to death, which was a big deal at that moment because no one had been executed in the U.S. in almost 10 years. Oh, Oh, that's why I remember this. Here you go. I figured this was the point. At the 1972 Ladmark case, Furman, vers- Furman v. Georgia, the Supreme Court had struck down all capital punishment statutes. But it didn't take long for states to begin passing new laws to get around the ruling. Just in time for Gary to be sentenced, the law had been reversed and capital punishment was again allowed in the U.S. Yay! So Gary informed the judge that he would prefer to be shot rather than hanged. That's oh, right. Yeah, yeah. But with, with thousand shots, though, we start with eat your pinky toe and you just keep doing... Pfft, yeah. Pfft. He chose not to appeal... His mom issued uh, um, sued for a state of execution on his behalf, which went up to the U.S. Supreme Court. But Gary said, told his mom, quote, to butt out. Oh. Hey, cow. Yeah. Hey. What did she say? <laughs> <laughs> Get back to your salt. <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? He requested to be killed with an air gun, the way his mother was people. Have <laughs> his mom went forward with the case anyway, but the courts ruled that Gary had already waived his right to appeal. What was the appeal though that he wouldn't get the death penalty, or that yeah. he get the one that he wanted? To, no, to not because no, to not. I would have ask to be it. shot too. You don't want to be. You don't want to hang. That's bro, hey, that's yeah, bad. Hang sucks. Get shot. To, getting shot. Yeah, pretty cool. As far, can, if, if we're talking about ways to be executed, getting shot. Can you die slowly though from being shot? Like that guy. I've never done. Not slowly the way they do shot. it. They no. saw these guys with rifles aimed right at you. They'll blow your brains out. It's great. <laughs> You know, I mean, compared to Hank. It's pretty great. Yeah. It is no, pretty great. I love the way. If I was the guy being shot and I'm like, thank God I'm not like that poor bastard mm-hmm. hanging oh, yeah. by his neck till dead. Well, you know yeah. the Japanese that have that thing. I think it was the Japanese. The death by a Bukaki? thousand cuts. Not no. Bukaki. The death by a thousand nuts. <laughs> a <laughs> thousand no, cuts? A thousand cuts. And they just like slice. Pe- they like they just slice you like for for days until you just die. But like it's it's pretty brutal. I think it's. I think it's a thousand cuts. I, I feel like. It is by a thousand cuts and you have to get married a thousand times to mean, mean ladies. Death by Bufu. Death by Bufu, bringing it back. Every once in a while. Seriously, though. So the court ruled that uh, Gary had the right to appeal. Several more stays were applied on behalf of the ACLU. But in December 3rd, they granted a stay of execution. But then Gary had it lifted himself on December 13th. Before his execution, on December 11, 1966, NBC Saturday Night Live featured guest host Candace Bergen and the cast singing a Christmas-themed medley entitled Let's kill Gary Gilmore for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Dressed wow. in winter attire surrounded by fake snow, the performers sang a medley of familiar Christmas carols with lyrics set to Winter Wonderland, including the line, 
In the meadow we can build a snowman. In the meadow we can build a snowman. Oh, there we go. One with Gary Gilmore packed inside. Is that what they said? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll ask him, are you dead yet? He'll, He'll say, say no, no man. man we'll wait out the frostbite till he dies. Till he dies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those writers, man. SNL. On the morning of, TV cameras <laughs> filled Sorry, the town Lord of Michaels. Draper. We mentioned uh, Kids in the Hall earlier in the show, so... On the morning of, TV cameras filled the town of Draper, and for the first time, Gary seemed nervous. He was transported to an abandoned cannery behind the prison, and five local officers lined up behind a curtain, aimed their rifles at his chest, and asked for his last words. Yeah, it's... Gary simply replied, let's do it. And the five men fired on him. That sounds like a, like a really, like a, he's going to have fun. Let's do it. Like we're about to go base jumping or something. Years later, ad executive Dan Wyden admitted that the final words, let's do it were the inspiration for one of the most famous ad slogans in the entire world. From Nike? Let's Just do it? do it. Dude, okay, can I tell you something? I, I used to say a joke about this, but I always thought Nike slogans sounded like like the thoughts of a killer, like the like, <laughs> like the Night Stalker. I was like, would the Night Stalker come out? Like, yeah. do it! Let's do it! <laughs> like having an and internal... It was, it was fucking Gary Gilmore? 100% correct. You mean like having an internal debate? Just gay, every like, sports like slogan. Yeah. Like, second place, the first lose is like, it just sounds like a murder, <laughs> like a serial killer. Nike's had serial killer things the entire time. Yeah. yeah. 100%. I cannot believe that my stupid thing... Your joke was accidentally thing... super accurate. Yep. Wow, this is a surprise ending, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just do it, I guys. was saying that I like the Night Stalker come on. Yeah. It was Gary Gilmore? Yeah. Fucking... He's yeah. not the Night Stalker, obviously. But he did murder some people he mur- in the he head. He murdered... Yeah, they did die. Just so you know, they Chesky, in case okay. you forgot about just that. Just in case, I was going to say, did, did they, could you remind me again, did they die or not? Yeah, they totally died, bro. They died. They died. Just do it. Just do it. Today's sources include Shot in the Heart by uh, Michael Gilmore, Shot Gary's brother. Shot in the Heart, and you're uh, to blame. The Executioner's Song by Norman Mailer, and The Evil Robots That's at Wikipedia. Wikipedia. The Executioner's Song got turned into Shot, a movie. Too. Shot in the Heart? Yeah. And his brother. It was yeah, originally yeah. called Dart in My Foot. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Foot Dart Brother. Yeah, who wrote course. the book. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was who wrote it. Yeah, the Foot Dart Brothers. One who was wrote. he was he uh, uh, sympathetic to Gary, or you think, or was he like? Uh... Um, you did read that book, right? Uh, well, actually, today we have. Uh, well, I want to say a quick thank you to one of our listeners and yeah. new contributor to the show, Chris Reinhold, Chris. for helping with today's script. So, thank you, Chris. Uh, taking some of the taking some of the weight off. My back is I'm carrying baby Slayton all over the place. Thank you, Chris. So Chris Reinhold, very nice work. Thank you, Chris. So I only read uh, about a, a chapter or two of this one, and uh, yeah, he, the what Michael did say was that like he grew up, his brothers grew up in like a different version of his house than he grew up in. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he was young enough and different, like different age enough that like their experiences were totally not together. I mean that happens too. Yeah. Sometimes you have like psycho parents, and then like you know one person takes that psycho experience and, and turns into a depraved killer, and the other person takes it and becomes like a social worker. So yeah. it just happens, you know. Right? Yeah. So there you go. That's the story of Gary Gilmore. And uh, I felt bad for him, you know, when he was getting shot at the very end. But then really I was like, no, I mean. No, kind of a dick. Especially like, I, you know, if he was just a robber, I would have been like, oh, yeah, get that cash. Get on like, the road. Run. Like, Let me throw darts at your foot and uh, shoot near you for yeah, fun. Yeah, or if he, if he like threw a dart at the butt cheek or something like that. Remember that one that one guy that made the other guy kiss uh, someone in their, their uh, asshole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember that? What? Sto- <laughs> we had a story where sometimes <laughs> I had Kurt kiss bare asshole. There was a story that we did where Look like me in the eye. Yeah. Kiss it. <laughs> there was a story where some dude like at like gunpoint or whatever like made like one dude like kiss another dude in his asshole. And I was like, that was funny. And you can still be like, ah, that criminal, you can still have beers with him. But this guy, like, he got the money from the register and he still had to go shoot the poor, like yeah. you know, the poor like uh dude behind the counter. So it's like, yeah, Fuck, wouldn't you? man. I don't know. I wouldn't. I mean, would. that's why that's why you're not shirt, as famous as Gary piece. Gilmore. Well, I don't want they to call, make it in this business. That's what my nickname's the human kissy peed because <laughs> <laughs> I will I will link right up. The human kissy feed. Guys, you oh, can dude. find Kurt Metzger online somewhere. KurtMetzgerComedy.com. There you go. Go see him do stand-up. Hey, also, why don't you see me do some stand-up? Yeah, also, go check out uh, his special White Precious. Oh, I think yeah. you can get hey, it still on Comedy Central. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. If you can navigate that app of Comedy Central. <laughs> no, the, I think it's easier to get to listen to, honestly, than to fucking figure out the Comedy Central. They got to fix that, man, that fucking app. Oh, What's it's, up? it's who, not it's not who's perfect. important nephew is running their fucking <laughs> website. It is weird. Who's like, I mean, now how many years has Netflix been fucking eating their lunch with this? Oh, and they're boy. fucking like, they're still going to hold on to that fucking that, website. Doesn't it seem like it'd be a simple thing at a board meeting where you'd be like, oh, we need to take care of this. Well, call, like this town is full of people that can handle that. Just call the so-and-so. It's just incredible. It's like, why are they committed to this? Just have it fixed. Yeah, it's weird. Because Netflix, now's the time since Netflix released 47 awful... <laughs> 
<laughs> really bad ones. You Netflix know what? How about this one? Out. Go to iTunes and get Kurt Metzger's White Precious yeah. or uh, Kurt Metzger talks to young people about sex. Oh, that's my first one. Yeah, yeah. both of those. Both that's of those what, that's are what the there. Red Bicycle joke, right? You can even oh, get yeah. you, you, and you can get the full on uh, video Forgot. special of White Precious on iTunes. I just found it right now. That's how oh, easy it was. Oh, get it. K U R T M E T Z G E R. Go watch that shit. You'll laugh your it's dick off. Freaking awesome. Because yeah, uh, they did a good it. job shooting it. Oh yeah. Um, it's very beautiful. I'm ve- yeah. Well, uh, what's his name? She's you look good in a blue background. You really yeah, the do. dude did a good job, and the co- all those people. It's just the the part where you get it. I don't understand how they. Well, that's why this production give, was give, great. Give Apple some more of your money. That's what we're telling you guys right now. Yeah, but and, the good uh, stuff is if you, if you go if you download that shit and like it, then you go see him live. And yeah, be there you go. Awesome. You can also see us live yeah, this Sacramento. Saturday in Sacramento, October thirteenth at six p.m. Crime hey. live. Come check it out. We have a really fun story plan, some other goofy shit. Oh, we hit 100 uh, reviews. We're at like 100, 200. Oh, we're actually at five stars and, now and because- our people... number's up. Yeah, yeah. five stars, we're, guys. We are a five-star podcast Thank now, you, dude. Thank you, motherfuckers. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, so, thanks for criminals. overrunning those guys who- uh, Well, kiss who... me directly on the asshole. Oh, yeah. For you guys. We've been, yeah, we've been trying to for a long time. <laughs> guys, uh, You can you follow guys are the our best. show at CrimePod, uh, C-R-I-I-I-M-E-P-O-D on I, on uh, Twitter and Instagram. Email us, crimepodcast at gmail.com. For your story ideas, questions, dick pics, label those for Shevsky. Label them for me. Go so to. We got a Dick Van Dyke pic. I got a post. We did. Yeah, we've gotten a few of those. We're getting some dick pics. We uh, also go to the Patreon. You can get some more bonus stuff and a bunch of weird stuff. Oh, yeah. I should have said this at the beginning of the show again, which we didn't do. What? But we're every two weeks now, as opposed to every week. And in between, in the, the weeks in between, we're still going to entertain you with crime. We do some it's just, goofy shit. It's just not, not going to be the, the one long uh, design story. We're going to like read crimes from the internet, but we're, Slate and I are still going to be doing we'll do our th- thing. We'll do things. We'll be riffing. Things it's, will it's happen. It's going to be great. Yeah. So you guys are still going to have a blast. We'll see you every week, obviously. That's what that's what we're trying to say. We love you emotionally. We love you guys. Bye, robot. We're, kith- we're kissing your metaphorical assholes right now. Mwah.